This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, I want to do another uh, short video because I um, can try and keep it short um, and sweet. But just to share a few things uh, that I've just discovered uh, this morning or in the last few days. Uh, I haven't been on um, making YouTube because uh, uh, I've just been kind of dealing with my own reaction to all of this um, and also I was chucked off YouTube uh, for a week so anyway let's let's go so um, I'll share the screen okay uh, okay so this is how things look and uh, it's say, oops, oh God. Uh, oh, things are looking a bit better. We've gone above the 2012 uh, uh, record again. So things are just not so bad. Everything's freezing up and uh, yeah, we'll be right for another 20 years. Uh, but I don't think that's quite the case because this is what I came across today. This is a photo of the mosaic leg five team crew and scientists in the North Pole, and I mean at the North Pole. And um, I'll take them at their word, their geographic position, but look at how the ice looks. Now that is the North Pole, uh, the northernmost point on the planet. So, uh, here goes the article, and I'll put a, dis uh, a link in the description box below. Mosaic expedition reaches the North Pole. During the le first leg of the expedition, the research vessel Polish Jan reaches the northernmost point of the Earth. And they've been doing this, I think, for about a year now. <coughs> That's dated 19th of August, 2020. At 12.45 p.m., on 19th of August 2020, the German research icebreaker Polar Stern reached the North Pole. The ship followed a route to the north of Greenland and through a region that in the past was densely covered with ice, including the multi-year ice. The journey from the northern Fram Strait to the Pole only took six days to complete. To mark this momentous event, countless members of the expedition team gathered on the bridge where their eyes were glued to the position monitors and then celebrated having reached the pole together. How exciting to be able to witness the end uh, of, of uh, polar ice, see? So this is um, uh, the bit that I wanted to kind of point out. I'm very surprised to see how soft and easy to traverse the ice up to 88 degrees north is this year, having thawed to the point of being thin and porous, says Captain Thomas Wunderlich. Even after passing 88 degrees north, we mostly maintained a speed of five to seven knots. I've never seen it so far north, says Polish Stern's captain. For this region, the current situation is historic. Normally, it's wise to avoid the region north of Greenland because it's home to the thicker and older ice and virtually impassable. But now we're finding extended stretches of open water reaching nearly to the pole. So all of that reflects exactly what I've been trying to point out. Um, for the last few weeks and months. Okay, and then in the meantime, this came out from uh, from Sam Karana on Facebook. A cyclone could push sea ice out of Arctic Ocean. A cyclone forecast for August 25th, 2020, with wind spinning counter clockwise north of Greenland as fast as 67 kilometers per hour or 41 miles per hour 
threatens to push the thickest of the remaining sea ice out of the Arctic Ocean through the Fram Strait. Now, bear in mind uh, that this is, this is some days out, this is a forecast, and forecasts are not always correct. But this is the forecast. Um, this is for the 25th, and it shows, um, definitely shows winds of here, um, you know, about 50 kilometers per hour, and uh, circulating around, and indeed it could push a lot of ice out of the Arctic region. Okay, and then I always come back, I'm just gonna go through some of my routine things uh, after what I've shown you, I hardly think it's necessary, but we'll go through it anyway. So here we are at the North Pole, um, the blue represents, I think, of ice about a meter thick. The, this, this magenta color represents ice of about half a meter thick. Um, so really, yeah, that's all that's left is just this area north of, north of uh, Greenland and Canada, or actually not Greenland, of Canada, and, and this area here that's about two meters thick. There's nothing, uh, nothing th thicker than that left. Okay, and here goes another uh, representation of uh, sea ice concentration, and you can see the effect of the recent uh, cyclone. All of this uh, ice um, is being destroyed, and all it needs is for uh, sea um, circulation. I would to you know to to, to move this. And here goes another representation. Is that saying more or less the same thing? And this is how it looks today. So you can't really see very much. That's been the frustration. You can see these little areas of, of, of blue, you know, gaps in the cloud. But of course, everything is um, is behind thick cloud. So thank goodness we've had the pictures from the Polish gym that have clearly shown us the true situation, which I've just been trying to ascertain from monitoring uh, in the normal way. So, uh, and then we come to, uh, to methane and we've got various kind of hot spots. This is just near, uh, uh, Norway is Emilia, and this has been, Margot has been talking about this for quite some time. Um, this is coming out uh, just uh, north of Severnaya Zemlya, which translates as Northern Ireland. And there are various other hot spots as well, like here in, in, in Alaska. Um, and just the amount that's constantly coming out from Scandinavia and of course, no one even mentions it. Not worthy of mention. So I just want to get on to a couple of things. Uh, uh, weather things. Uh, I'll start with the one that's hardly being um, being uh, reported at all. Or just really dire reports coming out from China. And again, the uh, the Three Gorges Dam has been put under under severe pressure. Uh, so heavy rain hits Yangtze River again, inundating cities and leaving many homeless. And of course there are also talk um, on the um, Epoch News um, that there are problems with, uh, with food shortages and the, the Chinese Communist Party is asking people to go without. So now this is, of course, is being talked about because it's in. I mean, it's been going on for a while. hasn't been talked about much until the last couple of days. So this is Northern California, and Bay Area wildfires grow closer. Mass evacuations form tens of thousands from homes. Neighbors fight to save homes with firefighters 
shorthanded. And uh, finally, this came out. I just noticed this on Twitter. Um, a new work on climate change and autumn fire, wildfire risk in California, led by Michael Goss, is out today, open access. We find that climate change has already doubled the frequency of extreme fire weather days since the 1980s. And of course, I will argue um, that it probably, well, it, it definitely doesn't take into account the elephant in the room, uh, which is uh, human modification of the weather. But anyway, for what it's worth, these are, these are the, uh, the maps. Okay, so that's it. Uh, well, it's not it. Uh, we can go back. I just want to show you the um, the uh, the methane. Okay, so we'll just go through this. Okay, so uh, okay, so um, that's it. Um, that is pretty stark to me. That that just that one photograph of the. Uh, uh, from the German ship, the Polish Stern, which just shows the true uh, state of the ice in the Arctic. And uh, well, I just love people to uh, argue with that one. Anyway, that's enough for me. That's uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.